In Omaha, we're at the visitor center for the Mormon, or the trail by the Mormon Cemetery. It's uh, about uh, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. in the evening. And we're just looking around. We've gone through the, the center. And we've, uh, some of them have gone on a tour. I've decided since it's late at night, uh, they're getting fairly late, I'd come out and kind of take a look around. I was light enough to take the, the video. So I'm walking down. Street looking up towards the Mormon Cemetery. There's our cars, Gary and Kim and and mine. We've got uh, Kim and Gary and their four kids, Ann and I and Brad and Shelley and Ashley and Paige and Greg are all on this trip. We're going back to Nauvoo, around to Independence. We're going to kind of follow the trail back to Utah. We spent last night in Denver. And here we go across the street. Put the penny in the sun right there. This Mormon Cemetery, there's 600 buried here. And as you can see by the sign, they were buried it was the winter of 1846 and 47. Here comes old Brad across the street. Hold it. Let me get you standing. There, let's take double pictures here. Going in the gate of the Mormon Cemetery. I think I mentioned there's 600 of the saints were buried here that winter. Beautiful cemetery. It's just on the, across the Missouri River. Can't see the Missouri from right here where we're at. But the Mormon Bridge is a couple of miles up north of here. Let's see, we're gonna look at this plaque. Kind of tells the story a little bit here. Okay. There's that big uh, statue you're talking about. Yeah, you got to kind of watch out for jiggers around here. Jiggers? I think it's probably more prevalent down the other part of the mission. Looking at some of the graves, J. Harvey, Paul Colbert, and Alice Colbert. Whoa, these guys were buried in 1943. 1891. 1891 on Harvey 1891. Colbert. But the one little gal almost made it to 100. Yeah. 90. Here's must be over at the other graveyard. Huh? I hope we get over there, but I mean that's nice in there, but it's mainly for non-members. Non -members. Yeah. Here's a statue of a father and mother burying their their baby. In 1961, I brought a family, the Couch family, up here to see the cemetery, and they later joined the church. Later, I mean, within the month. Jane Jones and Mary Jones. I'm going to have to look them up so they might be on there somewhere. There's Kay John. 17 months ago. 
17 months. I wonder if there's any of the Harris's that are... Right here on this plaque that's on the ground that shows the names of all 600 people at... Who's that? Priscilla Harris. Robert know? Harris, five months. That must be their baby name. The one that was no, the one that was blessed by the prophets was Shelley's great great grandfather, so it can't be him. Hmm. But Priscilla well, that Harris. makes you wonder whether we got the right. This is, might not be her outfit, or might I don't know. Oh no, hold it. Uh, no, it's Robert Green was the Robert Green that had the, the baby yeah. there. Well, it was blessed by the prophet this on the streets of Nauvoo. So this is Robert Harris here. So this could. Could be their child. Mm. Well, maybe while he was gone. Well, in the Mormon battalion. They lost one. Maybe they lost one, or maybe before he left. We'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, this is a beautiful cemetery. Look at the flowers, and and look at as you look out towards Omaha, you can see a lot of the beautiful trees and. Brad and I kind of snuck out of the the visitor center. Everybody else is listening to a, a spiel over there, but I think we think it's more for the non-members than it is for the members. So we've kind of gone out the back door. Brad is kind of a bad influence on me. I'm trying to bring him around to. There is a Garner there, died. What's the name? 23 months old. What's the name? Uh, Emma. Emma Garner, 23 months old. Hold it, there's, no, hold it. Gardner and Garner. It's Sil Garner. Sil Sil Silva was 23 months old. Silva Garner, 23 months old, was one of the one of the people that were buried here in the cemetery. As we look across the street, you can see the visitor center. Well, until these guys come out and I'll get their picture, I'm going to turn it off for a few minutes. Here we are coming out of the out of the uh, visitor center. Now we're going back over cemetery, which Brad and I have already been through, but. What a group, about 13 of us, all here together. And dressed up in her 4th of July special outfit. Paige, taking pictures of everybody and anybody. Did you take one? I hope this isn't, hope this doesn't break the camera. We're gonna try to put Red and Shelly in this. Greg is in. Turn around here, take a look, Greg. Kim, take a look here. This is our oldest daughter. This is the back side of the of the monument where the father and mother are burying the child. Let me zoom in here a little bit and see if we can. Pick up the, what was being said. These open uh, spots here, the flowers, are four graves that they found when they were putting this monument in. Two on the back side. There's two more on the front side. There's one there and one here. And there is my grandkids standing here in front of the monument.
Greg walking around the back. What did you do on me? Ashley and Gary and Kim. Ashley! Where from? July 5th. We're down in Bellevue, Nebraska. This is apartment that I lived in in 1961. Or early 1962. There's several apartments in this area. It's called College Apartments. Headed south. We're going to go to Plattsmouth after this. Or go see the chapel. Hey. Well, that's Nebraska. This is the apartment we lived in in 1961. Across the street, that house up on the hill there, we baptized three people in that one. This is the apartment in that Nebraska city. Probably about uh, February of 61. This is Ju July 5th, 1997. We're in Auburn, Nebraska. Looking at the flag uh, all the way around the park. They got double flag all the way around. And this is the uh, uh, place that I labored in 1961. And then one of these apartments up the street here. So you don't remember which one? Is this thing, uh, look at this. Is that one right there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. Oh, go, On the tape. apartments that we lived in in 1961, up above the stores. At the time there were new apartments. The next four and a half months were miserable in jail. It was cold and damp. The men spent most of their time crouched in the dungeon because the ceiling was too low to stand erect. They rested on dirty piles of straw spread on the jagged rock floor. The food was coarse and filthy. They were allowed few visitors. Joseph wrote to his family and friends, those who have not been enclosed in the walls of a prison without cause can have but little idea how sweet the voice of a friend is. One token of friendship from any source whatever awakens every sympathetic feeling. But more distressing to the prisoners than their physical circumstances were the meager details they received concerning the hardships being faced by members of the church. Forsake your religion. Abandon your prophet. If you do not, you need not expect redress, for there is none. It is impossible for my pen to tell you of our situation. 5,000 men, women, and children driven from their homes in poverty. We ask for the privileges guaranteed all free citizens to live and worship God according to our own conscience. No one but God knows the feelings of my heart when I left our home and almost all of everything that we possessed, excepting our little children, and took my journey out of the state. of 
painful refining for Joseph Smith and his companions. As he tried to pen words of consolation to the suffering saints, Joseph poured out his anguish in prayer. O oh God, where art thou? And where is the pavilion that covers thy hiding place? How long shall thy hand be stayed, and thine eye behold from the heavens the wrongs of thy people? In this cramped, confining prison cell, Joseph received answer to his prayers. Through revelation, he was given teachings as lofty as the heavens. My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine afflictions shall be but a small moment, and then, if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high. If thou art called to pass through tribulation, if the heavens gather blackness, and all the elements combine to hedge up the way, know thou, my son, that all these things shall be the experience and shall be for thy good. The Son of Man hath descended below them all. Art thou greater than he? Other important truths were also revealed in the Liberty Jail. Behold, there are many called, but few are chosen. And why are they not chosen? Because their hearts are set so much upon the things of this world. Fear not what man can do, for God shall be with you forever and ever. Let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly. Then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God. The Holy Ghost shall be thy constant companion and thy scepter, an unchanging scepter of righteousness and truth. The words of comfort and perspective revealed in Liberty Jail sustained Joseph Smith and the members of the church through this trial and many others which followed. What could have been a time of despair became a season of faith. The members of the church found temporary refuge in the state of Illinois. In April 1839, a change of venue was ordered for the prisoners. Realizing that there was no valid charge against them, the sheriff, directed by his superiors, allowed them to escape. They soon joined their friends and family in Illinois. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints remember the Liberty Jail not as a place of suffering but as a sacred spot where faith was tested and found sufficient. A place where the voice of God was heard again as he spoke to a living prophet. A place where revelation was given for all mankind. the church. Okay, let's go back. Get over there by that, you guys. Stand in front of it. There we go. Liberty Jail in Liberty, Missouri on July 5th, 1997. Back when I was uh, a missionary, that there was a house, an old house over the top of the Liberty Jail, with a basement with the three walls and the floor. This is a new visitor center. Well, I shouldn't say new. It was erected a year after I left the mission field. And uh, they have full-time missionaries here showing the, the jail. 
Have fun on your trip. We're going to. And you're helping make it a, a good trip. Oh, okay. How much longer you got? Three months. Three months. They'll go by in a hurry, I'm sure. Probably faster than you want, eh? Just went to the uh, church. Sacrament meeting at the Independence Stake Center, which is located over here behind those trees. And we're just going to go into the Independence uh, Visitor Center. Here's the reorganized church uh, auditorium which we used to call the barn. And over here on this side of the street is a reorganized church temple. None of this stuff was here when I was on a mission, except for this right here. And my mission home and, uh, and the chapel that I recall was clear up here on the corner beyond those trees about 300 yards maybe. Okay, this is a reorganized auditorium. The sign. Where's your camera? You get one from the front of it because I didn't get one from the front of it when we get up This part has not changed that much since I was here in back in 60. What's the person? I'm probably saying fix to the Church of Jealousy factory. This is a Hedrakite church. This thing has been burned down since I was here and rebuilt. <laughs> I still don't understand all that grass. Why don't you turn it sideways too? This is a reorganized temple. They aren't own part of the temple site, as well as a Hedrakite church right here. They own about 20 percent, and the reorganized owns a little bit more than we do. So I'm not sure whether that's 50 and. have the rest or what? Just turn the thing on and what? Yeah. 
Yeah. This uncle said they haven't had, they don't have much problem with dirt retrievers. I said. Well, I think it was more down pit though. Mm -hmm. Here, I couldn't. Remember.